we looked at um, financial parameters, net present value, internal rate of return. And when we looked at internal rate of return, there are different ways to calculate it. We can use a method which is called trial and error in the mathematical world. It's a simple uh, calculation where we use the properties of um, continuous uh, function to identify the intersection with the x-axis by limiting, by decreasing the interval. So when we have a positive value and a negative value, we know basically that the zero, the intersection with the x-axis, will be between those values. We are going to use that property. On the other hand, we can also use the internal rate of return formula, which is integrated in programs like Excel. But sometimes we don't find the result because we have to provide the guess. There are too many iterations, and when there are too many iterations, then the program just returns an error. What we're going to do in this presentation is have a look at the Excel formula that will be very simple, and then do the calculations step by step by using the method of trial and error. Now, when we look at the information what we have, when we have the formulas, when we have the internal rate of return, we can do the calculations and we can use the internal rate of return formula. Let's have a look here. We have an internal rate of return for an initial investment of 100,000. We put a negative sign here. It's very important to have the minus there. And then we have five future cash flows. And when we apply the ERR formula on this set of numbers, we find an ERR of 27.68%. We can ask for more decimals, but basically uh, two decimals is typically considered to be okay. Now, what can we do with these numbers? Well, we can create a curve when we have different discount rates and we can calculate the net present value. We can start from 0% going to a higher percentage. And we can select the interval as we want. And we see on this curve, we see how the net present value is evolving when the interest rate increases. We also see that there is an intersection here, which when we do the calculation, has to correspond with the 27.68%. Now let's have a look how we are going to do this. Now we already found in the table that the ERR should be between 24 and 28%. Now in the next part, what we are going to do is to get the it, internal rate of return by successive iterations. We have those iterations and we can calculate it step by step using the NPV formula. And we can start with the net present value with a certain interest rate. And when we see, for example, that the interest rate for uh, the certain interest rate gives us a positive NPV, another one gives us a negative NPV, then we know that the ERR is between those two. On the other hand, we know that we can find a better estimation by taking the average of those two values and repeat the same step. And that's what we're going to do in the following slides. The step-by-step -step calculations are not difficult, they just are a little bit tricky because we have to stay concentrated. So we start with the initial uh, flow, the initial numbers that we have, the initial investment and the future cash flows. They're exactly the same like in the first slide of this presentation. Now, when we looked at that first slide, we have to look at different elements. We have to have the different iterations we have the lower end and the upper end. So we have each time an interest and a net present value, an interest and a net present value for both uh, parameters. And we have a new estimate, which will be 
the average of those two parameters. So when we look at the first iteration, we had from the graph the information that the, net, the internal rate of return was between 24 and 28 percent. Now we see that the difference, the 24 percent gives us about 5.68 as a net present value and for the interest for the 28 percent minus 0 0.47 we could already say okay we are going to uh, f go a little bit faster and instead of starting from 24 percent we start from 27. Now what we have, the new estimate, is the average of those two. So 25 and 20, uh, sorry, 24 and 28 give a new, averages, new average of 26%. We have again a positive net present value, so we go to the lower end. So we'll put that value in the lower end, and we see for the second iteration, we have 26% and 28%. The 26% is still positive 2.52 the 28 percent is still minus 0 0.7 the new estimate is the average of 26 and 28 which is in fact 27 and here we have a net present value of 1 so we're coming closer basically if we would have used 27 instead of 24 we would have reduced the number of iterations with 1 now the third iteration, we still have a positive value, so we put that value in the lower end. We have the 27% as interest rate with an NPV of 1. The upper hand end gives us 28% and minus 0 0.47 uh, as an NPV. Now we take again the average, so we have here 27.5. We still have a positive uh, net present value, 0. 26, so we put that value again at the lower end. We see we still have the 27.5 having a positive value, the 28% having a negative value. We take again an average and now we find 27.75 and this value is now negative. So it means that now we know that the internal rate of return will be between 27.5 and 27.75%. So now we are coming closer already. We're still not there, so we take another average. And this average gives us 27.63%. Again, a positive value, 0 0.07, so we put it in the column of the lower end. And we find now that the internal rate of return is between 27.63 and 27.75. So again, we take the average and we see that our average is now 27.69%. We have again a negative value, minus 0 0.17. So we go to the upper end. This value goes to the upper end and it's very easy to program this in an Excel sheet to put the numbers in those corresponding fields. Now we see that we are between 27.63 and 27.69. We take again an average and we see that the average is now 27.66%. Again, a positive value, so we have 0.02 uh, nine. In the eighth uh, iteration, we find basically that the internal rate of return is between 27.66 and 27.69. We're still a little bit away from the value, but we're coming close. I remember we were at 27.68 with the calculation. Now we find the new let's say estimation is 27.67% and we have a value, positive value of 0 0.006. So we're coming closer to zero, but again, it's a positive value. So we go to the lower end and we find in the ninth iteration that we are between 27.67 and 27.69%. We take again the average 
So we find now that the average is 27.680%. We have a negative value of minus 0 0.06. So we're coming closer. We put it again at the upper end. It's the higher value of the discount rate. And we find in the 10th iteration that we see that we find 27.67% and 27.68. So our average, our internal rate is somewhere here in between. And basically in the end, we find that the, after the 10th iteration, we find an internal rate of return of 27.676%. The NPV is zero, only with three decimals. Probably there are some more decimals. It's not perfect yet, but we're getting very close to that final value. So you see how the calculations work. When you compare this number with the calculations of Excel, it's a little bit slower. Of course, Excel is very quick when you use the formula, but whenever the formula would not work or you want to do it differently, you can use this method. Basically, this method can also be used for other problems where you cannot find the inverse function. So this is a general method you can use for resolving, for example, the roots of third degree equations or other equations. It's a very practical way to do it. Anyway, this was the last thing of this video. We've seen how to use the Excel formula. I explained to you how to use the trial and error calculation. Of course, before leaving this video, do not forget to subscribe. Click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and you will be informed every time we have a new video online. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye-bye.